Hello, I'm Lee, I'm an intuitive, and every month I take the pulse on what might be showing up for you energetically, psychologically, and emotionally. Just a few of the themes for March 2024. Beyond the norm is now the new normal. Jagged energetics and how they are affecting us. And new levels of trusting yourself and what that's gonna do for your life. Stay tuned for the full update. Hi everyone, welcome to the energy update for March 2024. I cannot believe how the time just keeps flying by. And before I get into this month's themes, I just want to share thank you so much for the amazing response to our North American tour, which we are doing in June. I am bringing Davor on the road with me so that we can add music to the live events that I usually do, but haven't really been able to do for the last four years. So we have eight dates in North America, including two in Canada, Toronto, and Calgary. We've already had one venue sell out and a few of the others are close to selling out. So if you do want to join us, it's all on my website or use the links below this video, second half of June, and we can't wait to be with you in person. And for those of you who would like to have a live experience with me and um, with you know the work I do, but you can't make it to the North American tour, I'm actually doing a special weekend with Lee and the Z's because I will be doing a lot of channeling that weekend as well. So that's happening on March 23rd and 24th. At the very end of the energy update, we'll play you a little clip of that so you can get a taste and see if it feels like something you would like to attend. Let's get into the themes for this month. So it's been a very strong time. It's the understatement of the year and everybody has been affected in different ways. But there are a few different themes that seem to be colliding now. Some of them have shown up in the last six months, but we have a lot of collision happening this month in a positive way. So experiences and energies that have been playing out on the planet for recent months get a little clearer and a little more mm, in focus and forward moving as we begin March and go through the months of March and April, a little more open, a little clearer. Doesn't mean it won't be complex because these are very complex times that we're living in. But let's start with the first theme, which is new levels of trusting yourself. New levels of trusting yourself. So for those of us going through our continuing healing journey, awakening journey, deepening journey, trusting yourself will be something that many of you will be noticing you are doing at an all new level. There are different reasons for this. One, of course, is the main theme of our world right now is who can we trust? What can we trust? What shouldn't we be trusting? And this has been a theme that we've been especially playing through the last three or four years but how it's beginning to show up for people in terms of the positive side of the experience that we're having is we are becoming more discerning about not just the world around us, but more pertinently who we are and what our specific role on earth is, who we're here to be, what's important to us, what are the values that we care about and what are the values that we are on earth to be an ambassador of at this time, because we have one human life as this physical identity, and we have a fairly limited amount of time in which to bring ourselves to it. So yes, you can argue that as we go through our life, we're always evolving and we're changing, and there are some of us who will feel like we've lived nine lives in one by the time we get to the end of our life, but there will be key and core things, themes, and details about you that are very specific to you and are very much who you came here to be and what you came to this planet to bring to it at this time. All of these things are gonna be rising. So for some of you, the new level of trusting yourself might be related to some of the things I just said, mission-focused. You might feel, oh yeah, this is gonna be really important for my next decade or my next few decades on earth and I'm gonna really lean into that. Perhaps you're leaving something 
that wasn't very suitable for you before and you've now fully allowed yourself to embrace who you are. So you're trusting yourself and your path at an all new level. So it can be mission focused, but for many of us, it will be consciousness focused, meaning the way that we are feeling about things, the way that we are perceiving things. Many of us will be feeling that we are more deeply available to ourselves than we've ever been before. And it's often times of crisis that can bring us to this point. You have to really dig deep when things are tough. And we're certainly in a very tumultuous and tender time on the planet. So those periods where you may have gone within in recent months, it may have initially felt to you like you were doing it for self-preservation or to try and survive the storm that we appear to be in energetically. But having gone deeply inward, you may now be emerging as a slightly stronger, slightly bolder, slightly more embodied or empowered version of yourself than before and no longer holding on to old identities, beliefs, ways of being that wouldn't allow you to step forward in life anymore. So new levels of trusting yourself is exactly that. It's if you can fully trust who you are and live from that place more and more in your relationships in your choices as to what you're doing, what you're spending your time, your resources, your focus on, then your life starts to synchronize more and you start to find yourself walking your destiny path more than before. So this internal level of inner trust leads to big changes externally. You know, many, many years ago, I remember learning that my no was very important you know, as, as like many of you, I'm sure, as a recovering people pleaser, it was very easy to say yes. But what I learned years ago was the times I say no allows me to say yes to the right thing when the right thing comes along. So however uncomfortable I might feel about letting go of what seems like a decent opportunity or an opportunity I should take, if I wasn't feeling a full body yes about walking into it, I learned that I should wait. And then the thing that I was going to say yes to that was bigger and more me could come along at the right time when I was ready. So new levels of trusting yourself, which leads to bigger changes externally. So this internal focus starts to make us move through the world in a way that is very clear. And then the world will respond magnetically accordingly to the rest of us. We will both attract and very naturally repel or not attract things that are not for us. So for some of you, it may have been a bit of a dark night of the soul to get here, but you will be seeing some of the dividends start to pay off as you have a stronger sense of who you are, why you're here and what you think about the world and the state of the world right now. Having an ability to see all of it and understand what's going on, maybe be heartbroken or challenged by what's going on at certain times, but also to be able to go, okay, I, I see what's going on and I see why I'm here and I see how to move forward most of the time. So the next theme this month is time to begin, no more procrastination. Now, those are the words I was given and I immediately challenge them with, well, we all procrastinate sometimes, but, but what it really refers to is for those of you who have felt stopped over the last six months or so, or like you yourself are procrastinating and you, you want forward momentum, but you can't quite figure out what's the right thing, or you try and it doesn't work. For those of you who have felt stopped over the last six months or so, this for you, marks the beginning of a new energy chapter. It's time to begin. You will have been in a cocoon that you have needed to be in and you will start to see now in March, it will get easier for you to begin what it is that you want to move towards, what it is that you want to create. So time to begin, no more procrastination. I challenged how bold that sentence was because I think there are times all of us have procrastination, but that's really for those of you who feel like that has been your story for a while it will be easier from March onwards to be able to reverse that story you've been living and start to step out. 
Now the third theme, I feel like this has come up in different language over the last six months or so, but this is what I was given. Beyond the norm is the new normal. Beyond the norm is the new normal. So this relates to surprising human experiences and this relates to surprising spiritual experiences. So it was either last month or the month before I was sharing that more people are having more out there experiences than ever before. You know, a very close friend of mine who's always been an intuitive, who's had messages from their guides, they are now having full on experiences with ghosts and people who have passed over and having messages. I know other people who are having very cosmic galactic experiences right now that they have never had before. Equally, the most skeptical person that you know all of a sudden might start telling you that they're hearing messages and that the messages are good and supportive and they feel angelic. So beyond the norm is the new normal. As that relates to an increase in spiritual experiences, I always think for those of you that watch a video like this, I know many of you will have been spiritually awake, aware, a spiritual student like I have been for over three decades now, and some of you will have been a spiritual student for maybe six or seven decades. But there will be many in your life who are experiencing these things newly. So you may not be having these experiences, but people around you might. So you might find yourself drawn into conversation with people where you wouldn't normally have that kind of conversation and all of a sudden they start sharing things with you that are a little more esoteric or a little more unusual. So that's the spiritual side of beyond the norm is the new normal. But let's look at the human side and let's look at, you know, what's going on on the planet. I don't know many people who aren't also rubbing their rubbing their heads scratching their uh, scratching their heads rubbing their eyes when they look at what's going on on the world stage and everything that's going on all across the world and how it's affecting the trust levels for people and also the feelings of stability and grounding so surprising human experiences that to me talks to what we're all living through globally we're all in this slightly uncertain it's slightly rocky and sometimes deeply troubling, deeply hurtful time. But there is that also affecting interpersonal relationships. So even if you're someone who isn't overly looking at what's going on in the world, or perhaps for the sake of your nervous system, you take a break. You know, you look at the big headlines you need to look at, and then you perhaps retreat back into your own inner life as a way of being able to be okay and balanced, you'll be surprised at some of the surprising human experiences. We often track what's going on in our lives based on the past, based on what has gone before, based on what we've learned, based on how we've practiced things. So when things get unpredictable, you know, the glitch in the matrix kind of experience, it can be unnerving, but it can also be absolutely brilliant. It can also be the breakthrough and the wake up call into life that you never knew would happen. You know, I, I think for me, if I look at some of the relationships I've got in my life and how beautifully some of them have surprised me in the last couple of years, uh, people I've known for a long time behaving in ways I wouldn't have expected, communicating in ways I wouldn't have expected. And I've gone, oh wow, I've had to update my old brain uh, that, that had an idea of who they were or how they thought about things. So it's important to remember that even though I know a lot of the mainstream focus and the mainstream storytelling that we are constantly bombarded with is doom and gloom and all of the things that are designed to keep us feeling less than, small, not very powerful on this planet, all of which are not true, it's really important to also remember that those surprising human experiences can be delightful and enlivening and healing. So for you, beyond the norm is the new normal can also mean that you could be having a revelatory time on earth right now, literally where parts of your life feel more enlivened and awake and available to you in a way that you just don't ever remember before. And that is 
if you like the high of this time. And of course, we all know what it's like when you aren't in the high and when you're experiencing the purging that many of us have been going through in the last few years or six months, you know, pick your time frame. That brings me to the next theme, which is jagged energetics. Jagged energetics. I often see um, comments, uh, particularly in my portal community where we have a forum and people share things. I know a lot of you track things like the Schumann resonance, uh, solar flares, um, electromagnetic activity. That's not something I personally spend a lot of time on, but I always, I always find it interesting when I see someone sharing something about it. But how it shows up for me, or at least how I'm given it, is jagged energetics. So jagged energetics it can be when we have these pulses on Earth, um, almost like energetic earthquakes um, or energetic volcanoes. And for those who study the science of this and the, the data around all of this, there are very clear moments where the activity that's going on on Earth is definitely affecting all of us. For example, uh, you know, you can think of full moon and how a full moon affects certain people's sleep patterns, makes some people more psychic or more visionary during that period of time. Well, these jagged energetics, they've been going on for a while, but for some reason I'm called to speak to them this month. So a few of the ways that we tend to respond to jagged energetics, the first one is disorientation, which I think we've talked about a lot over the last few years because it, it's a very disorienting time on Earth compared to you know, what it was 10, 20, 30 years ago. Um, and that can lead you to feel a lot of fatigue. So you might be sleeping more, you might be napping more, you might be, you might be like, oh God, I'm over it this week, I just need to stay home. And that's okay, because usually if you stay home for that week, you'll come back the following week and you'll be okay again. Or a level of shutdown, shutting down from your life, shutting down from people, needing to pull away, going inward in order to just find your stable ground again. And of course, that can be a wonderful self-preservation technique. If you're still doing it weeks and months later, you want to look at it. You want to see how you can bring yourself out. But as a short-term solution or response to jagged energetics, fatigue and shutdown are a way that many cope with it. But what's going on underneath these jagged energetics, what's happening to us while we live through them that we don't always see at the time is a positive dislodging of old energy from our lives and also a level of ancestral healing. So ancestral healing is any part of our culture, any part of our own lineage, our own family line that needs healing, that needs updating parts that were wounded, that were traumatized, that were shut down, that can now come online. If you look at what's going on in society at the moment, there is an enormous, an enormous movement toward ancestral healing in groups all over the world that are mm, sometimes achieving what they want to achieve to bring more balance and more equality, other times having to really continually fight to do it. So there is this collective ancestral healing going on, but when you're in the middle of an experience of jagged energetics where you just feel like, I don't know why, but I just feel weird and I just need to quieten down for a day or two or three, or I just need to, whatever this is, it's moving through me. When we come out the other side of an experience like that, our focus may have gone to coping with it. But what our focus will often not realize is we are literally shedding things through that process. The jagged energetics are slightly earthquaking our own energy field. And when we come out the other side, we've opened something. That's why when you come out the other side of a dark night of the soul, you can often feel more liberated, more yourself, a little less afraid of things that you perhaps were before the dark night of the soul. So. Jagged energetics can be like mini dark nights of the soul that dislodge and release old energy from our lives. So pay attention to that next time you go through one of those windows and see when you come out the other side, ah, what feels different in me? Something feels different, something got dropped. So that's happening across the globe, but it's also happening for us individually and personally, and that's easier for most of us to track. 
than what's going on with everyone else. Okay, um, the next theme is rise of the sacred. Rise of the sacred. Um, I was given the words rise of the sacred and holy, but then I was asked to remove the word holy because to some people that's too fixed into religion, which you know is great. There will be some of you here who for you, religion is your faith, it's your guidepost, it's your way of staying afloat. But I know for others, um, holy is a word that tends to only refer to religious practices, at least from my understanding. But rise of the sacred and the holy, it's the practices and the rituals that keep you connected. So prayer might be one of yours. You might pray on a daily basis and that keeps you connected to working with the energy that you want to send out into the world, that you want to bring into and through yourself so that you can be a good ambassador of love or peace or healing on the planet, whatever your role is, whatever you think your mission is. But practices and rituals that keep us connected becoming more important than ever right now. So this rise of the sacred, the sacred can be in us and is in us. So often it's outsourced. Um, you know, for example, I have tiny small rituals that aren't that big, that aren't that fancy, that I didn't learn from other people. Uh, I like having a, a little altar in my home with certain symbols and that's something I've done off and on and just recently I felt the need to organize a few important things and just imbue them with a meaning for me so there's a focus. So the rise of the sacred is apparently affecting more and more of us as we turn to our touchstones, our practices and our rituals that keep us connected. And the reason this was given to me was as a reminder that if we do this, if we have a relationship in our life with what is sacred to us and what the sacred looks like for us, we will stay more connected, more afloat. And that's going to be really important in these times. It will deepen your own ability to connect in and connect up and connect through the body, especially because our bodies are so important right now while we have all these jagged energetics and traumatic things going on on earth or perhaps in your life, perhaps people around you. How's your body doing? How's your breathing? How's your anxiety? How's your nervous system? We have to keep a check on it and we have to employ the things that work for us because this vehicle is really important. It's the center of the soul in many ways. It's how we're here. So. If you haven't yet turned your attention toward a more sacred relationship with your body or a more sacred relationship with practices that help you feel more embodied, now is a really supported time to do it. Every now and then in an energy update, I get themes that I don't completely understand or I want to argue with. Um, so I'm going to share the headline and then I'll explain it. So the headline is anger losing power, anger losing power in the world. Now, the reason I have a conflict with that is like many of you, I'm watching what's going on and I see a lot more people wanting to fight and being encouraged to fight each other. We have horrendous war going on. And so when I hear a statement like that, it feels somewhat contradictory to what I'm seeing. And as usual, my guides say, wait, it's wider than you think, which of course is usually the way. So um, here's the, the explanation of it. Anger losing power. So anger is a fire energy and it can be protective. So sometimes we feel anger about something that we need to have a boundary around or to protect ourselves. So anger is not something that is always a negative. It's more how we use anger and how we let it run out of our bodies towards others. Because anger can also be reactive and or combative. We can use anger to go to fight with people. We can invade other people with our anger. So there will be a theme in coming months of anger no longer being the power it once was. There will be a theme in coming months of anger no longer being the power it once was. Now, as a human being, I read something like that and I know 
exactly what I want that to mean. I want that to mean that the world gets more peaceful all of a sudden. But it doesn't always look like that on a global scale. The message is, in your life or the lives of those around you who previously lived on or exhibited anger, anger will no longer be the power it once was. So perhaps for you, this is personal, perhaps you're beginning to add a touch more water to your fire. Maybe life has humbled you, maybe a consciousness awakening has changed the way you run your energy into life, or maybe there's someone or a group of people in your life that you've found challenging because of their fire or their anger and the way that they run that, and maybe they're beginning to change. Maybe they are no longer able to dine out on their anger as successfully as they used to. And successfully is an arguable word, but some people, it's fuel for them. So there will be a theme in coming months of anger no longer being the power it once was. So I have to think this is personal because it seems too soon to be global. So this, this is something to look at personally in your life and just pay attention to it. Anger is a fire energy and it can be protective but it's also reactive and or combative. So in the reactive and combative areas, anger is losing power. That can also be true for you. If you are getting more into your heart, your sovereignty, you're more empowered, anger will begin to get smaller for you and it will no longer be such a threat to you because it will now be a much smaller energy than it used to be to you before you yourself were able to grow and hold more in your own consciousness. Okay, and the last theme of this month, it's interesting. So, you know, I have my members community, the portal, and uh, among the various things that members get, I do a live monthly teaching for usually 90 minutes or slightly longer every month. And this month, the theme was courage, the change agent. Courage, the change agent. But I chose that theme because I kept hearing it. From mid-January, you know, I was thinking, what do I want to teach in the portal next month? And so um, in my live broadcast, I spent about 30 minutes teaching on how we identify how to use courage in our life and which areas to bring our courage to. So I can't do that whole 30-minute teaching here, I'm afraid, but I wanted to just give you the headline because it's pertinent to these times. So we create the new in our life through the courage to live in bold and creative ways. Now, of course, our lives change as we grow, as we evolve as society, as our bodies go through the age process, all of that is a given. But when we can apply courage to intuitively chosen areas in our life, we can initiate the change and make it happen. So firstly, remember courage is what you need when there's a little bit of fear. You know, if you're a person who's not a fearful person, you don't need courage. But courage is what we employ when we recognize there's an area of our life we're a little bit hesitant about or a little bit shy of tackling or we don't know if we really know what we're doing or if we can trust ourselves. It goes back to the first theme. So I walked my portal members through many different areas that we might want to be more courageous We might want to allow more of our voice. We might want to allow a deeper relationship with our body. We might want to allow a transformation in our relationships. There are several areas that you could pick, but you know, the first thing I said is do an intuition check on the courageous area. So which area of your life do you most want to focus courage on next? So you might just pick one or two a week. And let that intuitively come to you. Or maybe it's not intuitive. You go, oh, I know exactly which area is a nightmare. It's what I'm going through in my workplace. So, okay, how can you bring some courage to that area of your life? The next check you do is an awareness check. So the intuition check shows you where to go. The awareness check is, as you think about that area, do any fears arise in your mind, emotions, or body? in response to this desire. Celebrate and write down what you notice and then ask yourself what you can do to let those fears calm. You know, one of the things I've been teaching for years, because this comes from my guides, is they're always saying, 
If you notice you're scared of something or you feel deficient in something or you feel like you need to learn more, don't beat yourself up about it. Celebrate the fact you noticed because now you're aware and when you're aware, you can make some changes. So the third energy check you do on this courage exercise, when you've identified which area you want to be braver in, you've also done an awareness check on what are the fears that are holding me back from being braver in this area. The third check is check your energy. Am I ready to proceed toward this change? Or do I need some deeper healing, release or support before I do? You know, I, I shared an example in the portal of I had to tell a, a truth to someone that I knew was going to be impactful for them and for me. And so I sat with it for about mm, eight, nine days before I had the conversation because I needed to feel ready. My body needed to feel ready. So this is just a, a, a quick drive by. And if you're in the portal, you will already have, have access to this teaching. And if you've never tried the portal and you want to take a 30 minute courage workshop with me as well as everything else in there, please check out the portal. But I wanted to give you those things to focus you. This is a time where courage is really important. Sometimes it's the courage to carry on and that's enough. Sometimes it's the courage to recognize that your life is hard or that things are hard for you or what's going on in the world is hard for you. But I am going to find the courage to somehow get myself out of this. And what are the areas I next need to focus on to let that happen? Well, I guess it's support because if I look at the way I've been handling it the last three weeks, I've felt very unsupported. So you pick one or two things a week to slowly make improvements in your life. So courage is a big theme at the moment. So that is everything for the uh, March uh, 2024 energy update. Um, as I said, I have my members community, the portal, so many different things in there. Uh, this month we have Love Heals, the documentary and an interview about Love Heals, the documentary. We have the usual Qigong from Stephen Washington. We have um, the Healing Lounge. We have so many different member opportunities. And this month I have recorded a brand new set of meditations called Reconnect. Five minute meditations, because I know that we don't have a ton of time, but we need to reset quickly. So meditations such as reconnect to your intuition, reconnect to your abundance, reconnect to self-love, five minutes each. And there are four in the portal this month and there will be four next month. And they're all set to music from Davo Bozik. And uh, last but not least, Weekend with Liam Aziz is coming up on the 23rd and 24th of March. We'll play you a trailer now but if you feel to be with us, we'd love to see you. And don't forget, if you want to come and see us on the North American tour, please book your ticket soon to avoid disappointment. And we can't wait to see you. Thank you so much, everyone. Lots of love until next month. Take good care. I hope you will join me for this staycation for the soul. It's called Weekend with Lee and the Z's because it will be myself teaching energetically and intuitively but it will also be my guides, the Z's. I've been channeling for 25 plus years and publicly for almost 20 years. And so to get to do something like this live where all of you from around the world can tune in and be part of it is a really special experience. I often do longer workshops over a series of weeks, but we wanted to do something that was just weekend focused. So if you care to join me to connect to more of your power, more of your light, and allow the voice of your soul into your life in a bigger way, we would love to have you. It's March 23rd and 24th. There will be some sound healing included and everything is archived and you will have lifetime access to all of the live replays. So hope you can join me for Weekend with Lee and the Z's. Click the link below for more details.